found cold, scared, but alive. Riverdale police in Utah seen here rescuing 17-year-old Kai Zhuang. Missing for three days, the Chinese exchange student had trekked to this backcountry area, sleeping in this tent, running low on food. With him, several cell phones. That's how police say virtual captors manipulated and controlled the teen, likely from thousands of miles away. They call it cyber kidnapping. The cyber kidnappers convince the victim under duress to take photos of themselves that make it appear they are being held captive and send the photos to their parents. In China, Zhuang's parents, equally terrified, unable to reach their son, reportedly receiving threatening messages and contacting his school in Utah. The reason why they have him seclude himself in the woods or away from somebody, everybody in society, is so they can continue to extort as much money as possible. In recent months, police across China warning Chinese students in and out of China that the scammers often impersonate officials. They then intimidate the international students with threats of immediate arrest, deportation, and harsh sentencing if they do not cooperate. Police advising students if they get a call like that, hang up immediately and contact the Chinese embassy or consulate, your teachers and classmates at your school, or the local police. In November, Shanghai police reported a couple getting a threatening call while on a highway. They could hear their son's cries over the phone, the scammers demanding the equivalent of $70,000. While on the phone, the couple spotted a police officer at a toll booth who suspected it was a scam and stopped the mother just as she was about to transfer the money. There have been similar cases targeting folks across the U.S. in recent years. If I didn't do what he said, he would kill my mom. It looked exactly like my sister was calling. It was a man's voice on the other end screaming at me. If somebody told me that wasn't my wife, I'd say you're lying. It's so hard for me to describe to you how real this all sounded. You're in that crisis mode and you immediately want to try to fix it, which in most cases means money. Police say Zhuang's family did just that, ultimately transferring the equivalent of roughly $80,000 into Chinese bank accounts. When they found him, officers say Zhuang asked for two things, to talk to his family in China to be sure they're okay and to eat a warm cheeseburger.